Okay. Hi everyone, welcome to today's session. I'm just letting a few more people in from the waiting room, making sure that you all have your audio and your video working so you can hear us. Okay, that's everybody that's in the waiting room so far. You've all, you're all on. Hello, everyone. There's Kathy. <laughs> Oh, good. You can see her. Great. Okay. That's everyone from the moment. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so very much for joining us once again. Um, my name is Meg Hill. I'm the Managing Director of Cruise Express, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to today, uh, our fourth episode in our current series of Connection information sessions. Um, thank you for joining us wherever you are in Australia. Um, we're delighted to have people tuning in from across the country as we usually do, which is always great. Um, spring has certainly sprung here in Sydney. Uh, we've had the most beautiful weather in the last few days. Um, and it's great that uh, we're all um, beginning to be able to venture out a little further from home than we have in recent weeks uh, during the, uh, the very long lockdown across um, New South Wales um, and certainly, you know, our, our um, neighbours to the south in the ACT and Victoria also have had uh, very long lockdown. So it's nice to see that things are starting to change and open up. Um, so even more reason for us to say thank you. Um, to, uh, that, and uh, it's great that you're joining us to sit down for the next hour and um, hear what we have to talk about today. So as always, before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping uh, notes. First of all, we have popped everybody onto mute mode and that way we won't interrupt the presentation. Um, uh, but of course, there will be plenty of time at the end of that to ask questions. We encourage you to add your questions via the chat box, which is at the bottom of the screen, right in the center. Um, type those questions in. Kathy will be monitoring them uh, throughout the hour and we'll collate them and we'll have some question time at the end of the presentation. Um, the other thing which we have already alluded to is that today we will be showing a short video. So we recommend that um, you make sure that any other applications uh, or files are closed on your device. And then that way the video will play with the very best quality in terms of, of picture and sound. So um, uh, yeah, that, that will um, make for optimum viewing. So today, oh, and one other thing, of course, is that we are recording today's session. And the reason for that is that we um, are able to share it with people who may not be able to join us specifically at this time. Uh, and we'll also be uploading it to our YouTube channel. Um, and if you haven't yet checked the channel out, there are lots of other um, interesting videos um, and lots of other content there. So by all means, pop across to YouTube and just type in Cruise Express and you'll be able to see lots of the other content that we've produced in recent times. Um, so today, we're really, really pleased to be introducing you all to Coral Expeditions. Um, it's actually one of the very few cruise lines that has, has been able to cruise during the last 12 to 18 months. Um, one of only a very small handful of, of cruise lines that has had permission to cruise in Australian waters. So it's wonderful to be able to, to talk to um, all things Coral today. Um, and uh, I'm delighted on that note to welcome Liz Sawyers from Coral Expeditions. She's their national sales manager. Uh, Liz is based in Cairns in far north Queensland, so a long way away. But the beauty of Zoom is that we, um, you know, we all come together and it feels like we're just um, side by side. So wonderful to have you with us, Liz, um, today. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'm very, 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 very pleased to be able to be here. Cruise Express has um, definitely been one of our, our um, colleagues in, in travel for quite a number of years. And uh, you know, I really appreciate the time to be able to, to come along today and uh, to meet your, some of your guests. Um, I believe some have already travelled with Coral Expeditions as well, which is, which is fantastic. We might be able to take you on a few memories and then offer, you know, show you some opportunities about uh, what we're doing now and how we've handled the last uh, 18, 20 months, which has certainly been um, a little bit of a trial for the industry. But as uh, Meg actually alluded to, we've been very, very fortunate to have been able to, um, to cruise through this period. 
Um, so if, if it's fine with you, I'll, I'll uh, commence the presentation. Um, as I said, I've been very fortunate to be um, with Coral Expeditions just on three years now. Uh, we are based up in uh, far north Queensland, um, up in Cairns. Um, it's an amazing company. It's very hands-on um, in every aspect. Um, we're, we have dealings with um, the, the crew on board, the ships. Um, we've got all our um, department up here from purchasing to finance to sales to marketing. Um, every sort of area, all based up in here in Cairns. So, um, and for those guests that have actually travelled with you, you can really see that um, a strong Australian hospitality. Um, but before I go any further, I just want to, it's a short video. I hope it does play on all your systems. Um, if not, um, please note that this is the only video in the, in the whole presentation, so you, you won't be missing out. Um, but it just gives you a lovely feeling about what we do and how we really interact with the communities we go out there and take you to some of the most beautiful remote areas of the world. Um, so as I said, it's just short and brief, but um, I think it does encompass exactly what Coral uh, is all about. So as I said, we're a company, small company, but um, we're very much focused on our guests' experience, taking you out into beautiful um, remote parts of the world um, and very much destination focused. We started just over 35 years ago. Um, actually in Townsville, moved up to Cairns a few years after that. Um, we initially started on the reef, which is the Great Barrier Reef. We were doing three and four nighters out onto the reef, moved over to the Kimberley region for 25 years ago. Um, and now we have expanded even into some of the beautiful international um, itineraries as well. But um, it's all about getting you involved with the communities, taking, as I said, to the remote areas. We've built some really strong relationships to these places that we visit, um, whether it's the indigenous communities, um, up in the Northern Territory, up into Papua New Guinea, um, up into the Straits, over into the Kimberley. Um, we try and do as many um, sort of interactions we can in the most you know, in safe environment as well um, for the places that we visit. Um, the shore and shore enriched excursions. So we're only small. It's um, the most of our, our ships are actually taking are only 99 guests on Coral Adventure and Coral um, Geographer. But I'll touch a little bit more about the ships later. So you're travelling with small in a small group with like-minded people that really have got an invested interest in learning about culture, about the history, strong maritime history, about the destination, the flora, the fauna, and we truly really give you a very hands-on experience about that. We've got a great group. Um, on board the ship, not only the hospitality crew, but we have expedition leaders on there. We've got guest lecturers that are um, specific to the areas or the regions that we're traveling into. And you'll generally get out onto shore about two, um, generally about twice, twice a day. Um, it, it could be a marine focus. You might be going swimming, snorkeling, diving, kayaking, or you could be out on land doing some hiking, etc. But again, always escorted with our, our team leaders um, as well on these experiences. This is a beautiful um, part of one of these hikes that we do over in Tasmania. So we've now we've focused on our domestic program. So we're um, in the Kimberley, we're down in South Australia, we're down in Tasmania, we're up on the reef regions across the top um, as well. But um, in, in the past, and we will be going back in the future, we will be doing the international places as well. So you might be going out on hikes with the expedition teams. As I said, you'll be getting out there with the amazing wildlife. Um, you'll see the wombats or the you know, wallabies. Might go and see the orange belly parrot. Hopefully some of them down there in Tasmania see that. Snorkeling with the, uh, the whale shark whether it's out on Ningaloo over um, or on the Spice Islands and then just seeing the beautiful marine life as well. So it's an ma amazing, engaging experience just to, to get out there and have that opportunity to learn about you know, the world we live in as such. Gorgeous scenery, places we go. So you might see some, you know, some Indigenous art. So that's um, um, the artwork over in the Kimberley region. You might be part of the smoking ceremonies, whether it's up in the Cape um, York and the Torres Strait areas, but it's always spectacular and always beautiful where we go. And as I said, sort of remote areas um, that we're traveling through too. So, so can I just interrupt this? It's, it's yeah. 
clearly a very different style of cruising and you know I understand that we have quite a number of people joining the call today that haven't ever experienced an expedition cruise so um you know very very um uh, sort of yeah we're, we're all down to really remote places but then you're seeing them um up close and personal aren't you it, it's a very uh, intimate experience Absolutely, Meg. So it's not, the ship isn't the destination. It's the places that we go are the destination, is, is the focus. Um, so there's a lot of cruise company out there that, you know, they have, you know, the ship becomes the, co the place, it's the hotel, it's it's the, you know, the entertainment, etc. Our entertainment is actually getting out there into nature. Um, our entertainment, you know, is our experiences are to, to get our, our guests to go and interact with the communities, um, whether it's going through to um, having a, a smoking ceremony, going and seeing, um, going into a local school um, and, and really getting to learn about those places that we're traveling. So, so we are really for that educated traveler who has got a really strong interest in where they're actually traveling to and where they're actually experienced. And how we're able to get them over to these remote areas, we've got um, these explorer tenders and those who have traveled with us will know that you know, the the um, benefits of these explorer tenders. So we've got two on a coral adventure and coral geography, and we've got one on coral discover. And on the image on the top right-hand corner, you can see the two sitting up on top of the, on one of the top decks of the, of the ship. Um, as you can see the two sort of um, um, explorer tenders um, nestled up together. So what they are actually is like the bridge out into, the, into these areas, into this, um, the, into the wilderness that we're going to or the remote regions that we're going to they literally are on hydraulics so they will be lowered down to the deck level which is the image on the left hand side of the screen and where our guests can actually walk onto the explorer tenders so very comfortable to get on board um, once they're on board um, the they're actually lowered by the hydraulics to the water level they go out into the um to go and do their expedition um, for the day with it and they may do a remote landing out onto a beach where a platform will drop down from the front of the explorer attender and our guests can just literally walk out onto these beautiful beaches etc um, they can also be used for um, going and um, doing sort of cruising along the um, beautiful rugged coastlines and it's a real bridge to be able to get out into these areas and we're very fortunate to have them and I believe we're the only cruise operator that does have this ability to actually to get our guests out there in comfort they're, they're in undercover. So we you know, as you can see, you're not under, like not in direct sunlight at any time. So you've got the benefit of some shade. There is a bathroom or a um, toilet on board the ship. They've got speakers so that when the expedition team um, speak or the guest lectures talk, they're all the guests on the explorer tenders are gonna actually hear what's going on as well. We can also get everybody on our ships off at one time um, between the two explorer tenders on the larger vessels or on Discover all at one time. Um, so, again, it means that we maximise the opportunity and the time that we are out there in, in the world, out there in the world, seeing these beautiful places that we go to. Mm -hmm. So they are a very unique part for us um, uh, to, to coral expeditions and, um, again, a great way to get out there and see the places. But we do use um, um, zodiacs as well. So um, for those guests who've maybe gone through um, horizontal walls, they'll be out on the zodiacs, going over to Montgomery Reef or wherever we cry. They can also use the hydraulic system to go to and from and get so embarkation and disembarkation from the ship is very smooth and easy. And then we even have kayaks on board the ships as well. So if they're wanting to get a little bit more adventurous and have a bit of a paddle, a bit of exercise to get out there, um, we've got a lot of water, water sports activities as well. Um, we do the snorkeling, the diving on board the ship um, as well. So, um, sorry. So diving is an additional cost. Um, we do an introductory dive. So to get people to, if they, they want to do and they'd like to, like to have, um, go undergo that experience, they can certainly do so. They want to take it to the next level and do some diving. It is at a cost. It's a minimal cost. Um, but we dive in some of the most beautiful places like Osprey Reef out here on the Great Barrier Reef up in um, Raja Ampad and the Spice Islands. So they're amazing places that you can go. So depending on the level of activity that you want to do, you can do your snorkeling, you can do your diving, or you can just go out on our glass, glassy is what we call it, um, a glass bottom boat, mm -hmm. um, if you're on the Coral Discoverer, and just see the, you know, the beautiful marine life uh, from the comforts of, of the glass bottom boat um, as well. So lots of different opportunities um, as well to get out there and really experience the uh, nature in the world mm. um, as such. So we've got three ships in our fleet. Sorry, Meg, you were going to say? I was actually going to say, you, you, I did mention previously that you're in that enviable enviable position that you are cruising now uh, mm -hmm. and so you know everything that you're talking about today and everything that you're you, you can know, do now bring us is is available to people to book absolutely we're currently got coral discoverer and coral adventure over in the kimberley region 
um, they'll be coming down south. One will be actually one was going north, they're going over the um, um, to Cape York and Arnhem Land and coming back through to Cairns. And the other um, ship is actually heading down um, during the Abrolhos area. So um, from Broome down to Fremantle, we're going across the Great Ocean Bright and then heading into the South Australian waters. So we'll have um, a ship down there for doing a number of uh, season right through to January in South Australia, which I've got a few sides on that on the South Australian itinerary, because I think it's, it's we're cruising here now and we can you can actually start cruising now for us as soon as you get through um, onto the ships. Um, they are there and we've got guests on board. Actually, we've got Clive from Cruise Express on board right this minute in the Kimberley region, so um, which we're looking forward to hearing about his experiences. Um, so we currently have three ships in our fleet. Um, so um, our newest ship is Coral Geographer. Um, so Coral Geographer was christened this year in um, early in the year. So during the COVID period, we had a built over in a shipyard um, over in uh, Vietnam. Um, it's actually a Norwegian ship company called Vard. Um, so she is the sister ship of our previously um, christened ship, Coral Adventure, which was 2019. So both new ships. They take, they've been built to take 120 guests, but at the moment we're taking a maximum of 99 guests on board. Um, so, and they've got beautiful features on these ships as well, which I'll cover through. And then our third ship is Coral Discoverer. So Coral Discoverer was actually built in 2005, but she had an extensive refurbishment in 2016. She only takes a maximum of 70 guests on board the ship. Um, she's an absolute favorite for many, many of our guests. She's got a strong loyalty um, because she's small, she's near and she gets um yeah she's she's got a, a strong following as well um so gorgeous ships so i thought i'd introduce you first to the coral geographer and coral adventurer 60 um, staterooms uh, so but uh, at the moment we're only taking 99 guests on board um she had they have two of the explorer tenders um sitting nestling on the back of their ships on those hydraulics so that means that we can take all um, our guests off at one's time to make sure that they maximize the time as I said in these beautiful remote regions that we go to um, and it gives them a little uh, the explorer to, um, expedition team a little bit more flexibility so they can actually branch off and to do two different activities um, and then come and meet together a little bit later so that's coral adventurer and coral geographer they do have a lift on board um, this particular ship um, she has bridge deck suites explorer suites promenade and coral deck suites um, they've got some zodiacs on board as well, um, and, and a lot different to the um, a lot different look and feel um, as well. So this is the dining; it's open dining. Um, during this period, we actually have seated dining um, as, as well. So all the meals are included. They're chef prepared. We use a lot of regional cuisine um, on our ships as well. Beautiful paired with beautiful house wines. Um, there's um, some wine packages if you're wanting to. Um, there's an Australian wine package and the connoisseurs wine package if you're wanting to do that um, and expand on that as well. As I said, all meals are included. House wine, beer and soft drink spirits are included at lunch and dinner and then very reasonable bar prices as well. Um, but absolutely beautiful cuisine. We've got an open galley um, as well. So as you're going into the, um, to the dining area, you can actually look at the chefs preparing the meal and it's quite interactive as well. The chefs love you know, giving you a bit of a wave, as you know, but yeah, you get to have a, quite an interactive experience. And our crew are known for their Australian hospitality. They're very warm, they're very engaging and they're wonderful wanting to really engage you into the areas that we go to. They're, they're very proud of the places that we're traveling to and they, they, they bring that across. And um, as I said, very strong, warm Australian hospitality. We have a large um, bridge deck area over a large lounge area where our guest lecturers and our expedition team can do lectures up there as well. It's got drop down TV. So viewing is very, very easy. Um, it's a lovely, nice place, quiet place to, um, to sit and read a book or a magazine or just look out to in those large panoramic windows just to the areas in the scenery that we're traveling to. And um, we have some alfresco dinings, large deck areas. Um, we do have a gym on board for those who are wanting, they haven't had enough activity during the day, they can go to the gym as well. And then we've got a small boutique as well. So if you're wanting to take home some memorabilia from your trip or with Coral Expeditions, you can or take home some gifts for, for um, your family and friends that that's available for you as well. And we have an open deck, uh, sorry, open bridge policy so that the bridge is open to for guests to come and actually go and have a chat to the captain and the crew up there um, at any time. Only the only time that the door is really shut and um, it's very minimal. But, you know, go up here early hours in the morning. I know that um, our captains quite like you know, when our, crew, our guests come up, they have a cup of coffee in hand and you know, join them for, as we're you know, coming in, the sun, so sun is rising, etc. Also, beautiful viewing area. I've been up there. We know we've seen that, you know, the, 
um, whales going past and the dolphins, etc. Great viewing up there. And it's just a nice place to, to really see the workings of the ship. And we do engine dream tours as well um, with the engineers down there if you're wanting to do that. And again, as I said, very interactive with our crew. We're wanting you to have the most out experience. It's your home away while we're actually going into these you know, stunning areas that we're traveling to. Yeah. Yes, um, can I just, sorry, can yeah, I can sorry. We pop back to the last slide? There was yeah. something that really caught my eye. The top right photograph, uh, that's a lounge area within the bridge, is it? That is, it's actually in a lounge area there. So it's comfortable seating. You can actually just sit there and um, just to join the company, join the company of the crew up there and the captain um, as we're cruising along. So, you know, it's been specifically designed. And yeah. as I said, it's both on Coral Adventure, Coral Geographer and the Open Deck is Coral Discover as well. So all, all the ships have um, this policy and it's not, not a closed door for, I guess, we want them up there to see how we run, see how we're going, where we're going um, and uh, really experience it. So Again, um, it really um, shows the difference between expedition cruising and what we might call more mainstream cruising, I suppose. Yes. Um, and as you say, there's it's a hive of activity. Uh, and so whether it is that you're up there for, for viewing purposes or whether you're perhaps interested in the in the um, actual navigation and the and the operation of the ship, um, uh, I know from you know personal experience, the officers are just so willing to share what it is they're doing and to talk about you know how how different pieces of equipment work and so on. It's a fascinating opportunity that that people yeah. are afforded when they when they're traveling with you. And we do do captain's welcome drinks and captain's farewell drinks, and and they're a great opportunity to to meet with the captain. But he also sits down and dines with our guests on, on a regular basis. He's also there, as I said, at the, at the open bridge deck. So you do really get to meet you know the, the the person who's in charge at the time, and he's out there and he wants to meet you as well. So it's a it's a really great great experience, and uh, as I said, very warm, open, um, encompassing environment. Um, it's it's very different to to other cruising. So. Yeah. Such. it's it's very Australian hospitality as we call mm -hmm. it um, so this is just um so we've got the bridge decks we've got explorer decks we've got um some uh um some beautiful rooms this is actually a, 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 images of our bridge deck suites so they're quite different um as such so coral geographer and coral adventure have bridge deck suites coral geographer has been um, slightly changed in that we've got six of these suites and then we have these beautiful i call them infinity baths so that's actually a bath at the bottom image and it's surrounded by glass mm -hmm. but it is privacy glass where there is a button that you can actually push and that glass fogs over so you know if you're not wanting to be seen or you're not wanting to look out into the beautiful environment you want to have a bit of mm -hmm. You just hit the button and the, the screen, uh, the glass actually fogs up and so you, you're not actually out on display if you don't want to be. But it does give that sort of great ability to just sit there in the tub and relax and look out to some of the most stunning areas that we're travelling as well. So we, uh, we have six suites on Coral um, Geography, two on Coral Adventure um, as well. So lovely suites. These are our Explorer decks, um, state rooms. They have our verandas as well. So they sit, you know, a table and two chairs out there. Um, as you can see, nice and beautiful and modern. Um, um, there's lots of um, points available, lots of charging points there, um, very comfortable furnishings as well. And again, the, the, in the bathrooms for all our promenade, explorer and coral decks, the, with the glass in the bathroom, it's that uh, privacy glass. So you can see in this particular image on the right-hand side, it's fogged over, but you can actually hit that button and it'd be clear and you can look into the room and then outside to, into the, um, out through the window as well from where we're traveling. So it's, they're quite different as well. Promenade deck rooms have a large picture window that's up on the left-hand side. And then our coral deck state rooms have the porthole. Um, and they're both the same sort of size in the, in the rooms. Um, so the, the promenade deck and the coral deck are 17 square metres. Um, our suites are 37 square metres on coral geographer and our um, explorer are 21 square metres. So they're nice sized rooms as well. So very, very comfortable. This is our beautiful coral discoverer. I, I've separated her because she's got a different look and feel. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, Coral Adventure and Coral Geographer do have a lift on board. They've got large entertainment areas on board, etc. With the lift, um, please just be aware that that lift is just for um, uh, convenience, really. It's not to be used in any cases of emergencies, etc. Um, it's there for, for, for convenience. So Coral just, um, Discover takes 72 guests um, on board. Um, she's a favourite for a lot of our guests. Um, she's been, had, a, as I said, an extensive refurbishment in 2016. And she has one Explorer tender because that's enough to take all our guests off at the one time. 
um, as well. Um, a thousand square meters of um, decking area, just uh, so nice uh, fresco dining, lovely areas to sun deck to go and lounge there. We've got the lecture lounge as well, that um, you can hear all the talks from the expedition leaders and the guest lecturers, and again, open dining um, for us guests as well. Same inclusions, all the meals are included, house wine, beer, wine and spirits. Um, they're included at lunch and dinner. 24 hours tea and coffee is available um, as well. The room styles are a little bit different again. We've got the main deck state rooms with the portholes, promenade decks with the large um, picture windows and our bridge decks have the balconies um, on Coral Discoverer. So Meg mentioned um, that we are the only cruise or we are the cruise client that is cruising at the moment. Um, we've had a very interesting um, probably last 20 months, we have been back on the water since October last year. Um, we have implemented a system called, or a pro program called Sail Safe Program. And it's worked very well for us. It has been, um, it's very much um, uh, in coherence with all the policies and guidelines from all the states and territories as well. Our guests are, um, sorry, our ships are only allowed to take a maximum of 100 um, guests. So we max them out at 99 guests for Coral Adventure and Coral Geographer. All our crew and passenger, uh, sorry, all our passenger crew are Australian. At the moment, we're an Australian flagged expedition ship. So that means that we can stay within the Australian waters. So at the moment, we won't be going over to New Zealand until the, you know, the borders open, but we've got a beautiful coastline to go out and discover. And we've got such amazing, we've got all that um, you know, beautiful Indigenous cultures to be. We've got the beautiful um, scenery to go. We've got some stunning um, areas, amazing maritime history, amazing history as well. And some of the most remote areas, like places like Port Davy down in the most southeast corner of Tasmania, you can only get there if you want to go by ship or if you want to hike for seven days or take a par in your flight when we can get our, our guests there for a couple of days at a time. So you know, we're remote-based down destinations um, and we've been able to sail because of this sail safe plan. Now, with the sail safe plan, um, it isn't as daunting as it sounds. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite easy once you get used to it. It's a little bit of paperwork to do. Um, what we actually ask our guests to do is that they are required to go um, and fill out some paperwork for us, um, just a medical sort of, I guess, a bit of an idea about, you know, um, medical assessment. Um, then we ask them to go to a GP between seven and 10 days prior to their cruise departure date. So just it can either be your, your regular GP or to our GP. So it doesn't, you know, maybe traveling at the time and not have your own GP, but just to a GP to fill in a questionnaire. You submit that through to us, we'll get them to send it through to us and email it through to us. During the next seven to 10 days or so from that GP visit, we ask you to be aware of your surroundings, not isolate, not, um, not do self-isolation, et cetera, but just be aware of your surroundings. Don't go to large functions or events where it could put you at an exposure risk um, to COVID. So just be aware. Wear a mask when you go onto the plane. Wear a mask if you're going onto a bus. Um, that, that type of situation. Just be aware of your surroundings. And then it's seven, between 72 and we really mean between 72 and 48 hours prior to embarkation time, we actually ask you to undergo a PCR test. Uh, we've got partners with Sullivan Nicolades that we can um, recommend or you can go to your own um, if you're wanting to, but we need to have a negative um, test result prior to um, boarding the ship. Um, and that, if you're going with through one of our partners, is actually sent through to a dashboard, which our hospitality director, um, it's very private. He's the only one that has, has the pass through to that. We get the tick that you're fine, you're um, COVID free, and then you get on board the ship. Um, all our crew undergo this um, testing as well. So everybody on that ship has proven that they're negative. Um, they're traveling in a bubble. Where, where are we going is in remote areas as well. So it's very much a reduced risk. So you, once you're on, on the ship, there's fairly, very few changes. Again, you know, we have a med medic on board the ships, all of our cruises now, um, and it's they do a regular temperature testing. It's one of those, you know, it doesn't, it's not a thermometer in your mouth, it's just a, um, a gun thing that just they take, quickly take your temperature during, during the trips as well. Um, if you've got a, a situation you want to have an assistance, um, the medic professional is there as well. We ask, you know, uh, guests obviously to wash their hands. Um, we don't do buffets anymore, we do table service. It's so a very minimal impact when you're actually on board the ship. And that is why we've actually been able to, to continue to cruise and continue to cruise in a safe environment for both all our guests on board, our crew, and it's also down you know, to the areas that we're traveling as well. So nice and easy, um, really, and to have that experience to actually be out there right now into these beautiful environments to, to be experiencing that. 
um, it's a little little process to do to have an amazing experience once you're on board. Mm. Um, so I just thought I would travel, um, I could just travel, I wish I was, um, I would mm -hmm. take you through a few of our beautiful itineraries that we have um, and I'll just do a few one of our, um, our key itineraries that we've been, we've been traveling for over 25 years in the Kimberley region. We're known to be the pioneers of the Kimberley. Um, we get our, our, our crew are very experienced in that region. Our expedition leaders have been um, traveling in that region or they're either, um, they're, they've got a distinct influence and interest in this particular region as well. So, you know, obviously in the Kimberley, it's between Darwin to Broome or Broome to Darwin, we go vice versa. We travel there really between March and through to September. We came there three seasons in the Kimberley region. Um, early in the season, we call it the waterfall season. It's when the waterfalls are at their strongest, it's, you know, it's coming out of the wet season um, and they're very, very powerful. So that's the season we call waterfall. For uh, May through to you know, August um, is when we actually, so it's our peak season. It's beautiful weather. It's a lovely environment to travel in um, as well. And then towards the end of the season, sort of August, September is we call it the whale season. It's when the whales are migrating up there. And we have, even today, there was just a beautiful image of a whale breaching um, outside one of Coral Adventure um, uh, staterooms when the guests took a photo and sent it through today. So great um, season, so uh, March through to September. We are now, um, Meg just mentioned, um, you know, what itineraries are really popular. Kimberley is very popular with us because, you know, we are, are the leaders in that region. So we are selling for, we have got some sale dates for, for the remainder of the season, um, but we're coming to the end of this year. Um, but we will be back there for 22 and 23 as well. So if you wanted to um, book ahead, start looking at 23 because 22, sorry, start looking at 22 because it's starting to fill up with all the guests that are traveling um, locally now. Mm -hmm. And you'll have those experience, go to King George Falls, um, get into those Zodiacs and go um, across the horizontal falls, go to Montgomery Reef, um, see the wildlife, see the indigenous artwork. Um, a great, great experience as well. But we're not just in the Kimberley as well. Um, we go do our out to Ningaloo. Um, so if you've got uh, wanting to do some diving or snorkeling out there, um, so we've got some um, cruise itineraries on Coral Discover out into the Ningaloo region. Kimberley Icons and the Rolly Shoals. So the Rolly Shoals is an area um, that just snorkeling and diving again. Um, so it, it's taken some of the highlights of our Kimberley trip Put it with some snorkeling and diving and going out to some remote um, reef areas as well and combine it to making it a 12 night um, itinerary and we've got those going in September 2022 and September 23. And then we have another one which goes from Broome down to Fremantle and vice versa. Um, it's the Abrolhos Island area. So it's, um, it's another different region off the Western Australian coast. Again, snorkeling and diving is available in this particular region, um, some of the nice remote areas. And as you can see, some very inquisitive uh, wildlife mm -hmm. um, in that particular um, image. Um, then our ship is heading down south. I mentioned before we're going into South Australia. Um, so we have a lovely itinerary. Which we, we trialled it first um, and it being true expeditions, it was our first time for us going over in South Australia earlier in the year. And it was a real highlight to people. There's over 300 to 350 islands off the South Australian coast. Um, and we have that opportunity to go out and explore you know, the more remote regions. So, yes, we do go to Kangaroo Island, but we go to the other side of Kangaroo Island. We're not so visited by, um, by the local um, tour, other tour operators as well. We're going to see some beautiful lighthouse visits. Um, you know, we'll go, we'll do abalone tasting. Um, we'll go to Stroke Homestead. Some of these settlements out there in these remote islands, um, they've had this amazing lifestyle and a lot of history out there as well. Um, the Coffin Bay experience, so we'll go and taste um, oysters out at Coffin Bay. Um, there's two um, experiences at Coffin Bay, but um, I think if you get the opportunity to go out into the waders, you actually put those, don those waders on, get out into the water and out onto a shelf and taste your oysters out there. So it's not just sitting in a restaurant. You have got that opportunity if you don't want to get the waders on. Um, but yeah, it's it's just uh, takes you to really engage into, into, the, um, into the region that we're traveling through. So, so you've got a number that's, of that's that bottom right corner photograph. Yeah. That you're about. Yeah, the bottom right, that's got the waders on. Overall uh, style um, waterproof pants, yeah. Yep, that's um, and it's had some some great fun feedback and a lot of laughs uh, from our guests who have actually experienced that. So, and there's a lot of history here, um, and the the guest lecturers um, from this region are very passionate about the area and they really bring it to life. I'm um, talking about you know the early settlements in the area. There's a lot of um, marine history and you know Flinders in this particular area as well. So, um, you, you'll hear all about it, and it's great. So we've got, as I said, a number of cruises this time. So 
not being able to go into international waters means that we are able to focus here on the domestic um, itineraries and we're going to have coral adventure and coral geographer in this region not only at the end of this year so pretty much from November all the way through to January and then we'll start again in November in 2022 again so it's it's been popular it's something that uh, people probably haven't even thought about um, exploring South Australia and not the land side of South Australia but the water side of South Australia um, and the marine side so yeah great great itinerary um, and great place to explore as well so um, yeah, we're going to be back there sort of fairly soon, actually. Mm. Um, but other itineraries that we do, um, I mentioned before, we're going from Fremantle, we're going across through to Adelaide to bring her down, the ship down over to this region. So we're going across the Great Australian Bight. Um, again, it's going to be an epic um, cruise to do. So uh, something that's a once in a lifetime for, for many people to be able to go through this area um, as well. So we're doing uh, between Adelaide to Fremantle, Fremantle to Adelaide, um, going in both directions but there's also one cruise that we're going from Melbourne um, so any of those Victorians that wanting to get out something to actually head out from Melbourne through to Fremantle it's on it's in March 2022 um, so we're going across the along the Great Ocean Road so we will be stopping in places like Apollo Bay um, Port Ferry um, as well we'll be going cruising past the, um, the Apostles so and then heading into the Kangaroo Island and then moving through um, across the Bight um, and then up into Fremantle so another um, great itinerary and great um, opportunity as well. Um, we started off in the reef, um, so we still do reef um, cruises. Um, we have seven night trips and in and out of Cairns. Um, so up here, we love it when um, our ship comes up um, to our home base, um, but it's a beautiful cruise. So what we'll do is we head out to Cairns. Uh, Cairns, we go across to Fitzroy Island. We've got an opportunity to go to the Turtle Rehabilitation Station there. Um, it's a volunteer organisation over there, so we'd like to support um, the locals as well. We'll go out into some beautiful reefs. So that's Sunbury Reef on the right-hand side. And we'll actually do, and it's one of the signatory things we do as many times on our cruises, on each of the cruises that we can do, is actually do like sunset drinks, et cetera. So the team will take out, there'll be chairs and beautiful tables all set up with, you know, having a beer or wine and a champagne or sparkling out there on these remote reefs, I saw this remote cay. Um, and then you have that chance to you know, you know, have a walk around the cay or you have to go snorkeling or do some diving. Um, and it's just this beautiful, spectacular, stunning place. And so, as I said, remote out there. Um, we'll go out of Spa, we'll go up to Cooktown. Um, you get a chance to see the museum, go to, um, go and have a look around Cooktown um, and wonder great history obviously where Cook landed as well. We'll go out to Lizard Island, um, have the again, chance to snorkel dive and then we'll go as far out as um, Osprey, um, Osprey and the Ribbon Reefs. So Osprey is one of the world's top diving spots so to get out there and have our guests have experience and you don't have to be um, a diver, you can, you, know, you can still experience it with the snorkeling as well um, and it's as I said one of the most beautiful places and a lot of marine life um, out there that our guests get to experience as well. Um, again, other opportunities. Uh, we have a really good um, cruise coming up, which I'm quite excited to hear um, feedback from. It's called Across the Top. Um, it's we're leaving from Broome, um, across, heading across the top over to to, um, to Cairns, and then we're returning again. So it's an 18 night trip. It is a different time of the year to travel. Um, so we're going in January. Um, so people say, you know, it's the wet season, what are you doing? It is also the time when you get, it's this remote area, you can't get up there by road, you need to go by ship. Um, it's when the wildlife is out, it's when the, um, it's very, very lush and we have air conditioning on the ships. So um, it's a beautiful time. It's something that most people don't you know, think about um, going up there and experiencing at that time of year. But um, if you actually um, look into it, it's, it's a very, um, very vibrant and alive time to travel in that particular region. So we've got two trips doing that. We've also got uh, at the end of this year in November, um, and again in October next year, we're going to have Coral um, Discover head up to Horn Island. Um, so do the, um, the Torres Strait area, so it's the best of the reef plus the Torres Strait area. Um, she'll do a Cairns to Horn Island or a Horn Island to Cairns. Um, it's 10 nights up and back, um, but sorry, 10 nights in each direction. Um, and again, lots of, um, lots of culture as well as um, the marine and um, flora fauna of the region. Cape York and Arnhem Land um, is an extremely popular cruise. That's between Darwin to Cairns and vice versa. And we've got a number of them. Um, a lot of the ones that are actually from Darwin to Cairns are art themed as well, so Indigenous art themes. 
Um, so we'll have an, an artist on board the ship or when somebody who's um, a lecturer about that particular sort of bit more of a focus on art. Um, it is extremely popular, so you do need to look into 2022 and we've opened up 2023. So if you're wanting to get up into that Cape York and Arnhem Land, think ahead. Um, and mind you, just at this moment, we do have a departure that has got some availability just due to the current situations with closures, et cetera. So um, October has got some if you're wanting to go and you can get away um, more, uh, in, in the near future um, as well. Tasmania, um, we've been down in the Tasmania region for a number of years as well. I've just picked out this one because it's called the Coastal Wilds. It's a 10-night Hobart to Hobart cruise. Um, it's on Coral Discoverer, great ship for down there. She's nice, small and intimate. We hug the coastline around there. We go to places like Mariah Island. We go up to Port Arthur, but we also go to this beautiful area called um, Bathurst Harbour or Port Davy um, as well. So that, as I mentioned earlier, you have to walk for seven days or catch it. Um, if you can't cruise there, you catch a walk for seven days or you catch a flight by power of you want to get out there. It's beautiful. It's remote. It's unique. Um, and it's truly Australian. You also hear about some of the pioneers in that region as well. Um, people settled in these, you know, it's these environments, which would be quite harsh during the winter months. But you'll hear about all of that with our ex expedition team and leaders. And again, just cruising along those beautiful coastal cliffs, um, it is absolutely amazing. You have dolphins, um, you know, splashing and um, diving beside the ship as we're going through here. So lots of fur seals, wombats, wallabies, that um, red belly, uh, sorry, orange belly parrot. That um, you can get down in that Port Davy region as well, if you, you know, like if you're liking to go watching as well. But we have got a number of opportunities in Tassie, so we do a circumnavigation of Tasmania um, as well. It's 16 nights. We've got a couple of sailings coming up on that one as well. Again, a very popular one. So if you're wanting to do a circumnavigation, um, book ahead and or think ahead um, as well. Coastal treks um, is the uh, really our 10 night. Um, cruise, but we've actually put a more of a focus on trekking, so hiking as well. So, so, so just um, if you're really wanting to get out there and just a bit more of the hiking um, experiences, the, that has a little bit more emphasis on the hiking on some of those departures. And then we do the Sydney to Hobart. In we're not doing for this year for 2021. Um, it leaves on Boxing Day out of Sydney, but we will um, planning to do it on um, the 26th of December for 2022. So it still is on the radar um, for us to get on down to Sydney to Hobart, but just due to the circumstances at the moment, we're going to be concentrating on our Tasmanian cruise itineraries and unfortunately have to, to leave that one behind. Um, but it will happen again. And... This is the world that we are in at the moment uh, with domestic focus, but we have not dropped our eye and we will be going back out there on our international journeys. And you'll hear a lot more about them coming up. So we will be going back to New Zealand. Um, we've got some lovely itineraries um, up into the fjord lands along um, the east coast of New Zealand as well. Um, Papua New Guinea, we're very, very strong relationships with our, our neighbours to the north um, and we can't wait to get back up to see them as well. Um, Spice Islands, um, stunning area. We've got a lot. Um, we'll be going back up there. We'll be heading up to um, to the South Pacific. We, we we had a journey or cruise going out even as far as Pitcairn region. Um, and then we had originally had our coral geographer maiden voyage was across to the east coast of Africa, um, and we're planning to still do that. So these plans haven't they're just put on hold um, for, for the immediate future. But we are definitely going, and they can definitely be um, start to look at and investigate and, and plan for your future um, if you. Want Wanted to get out there. Um, so like East Coast over the Seychelles, Mauritius, yeah, and across and finishing up in Zanzibar. So um, you'll see those um, dials over there. So yes, yeah, so the lovely opportunities are still there and available, but we're focusing on Australia at the moment. We can get you out onto a ship right now if, um, if you, as soon as we get through these borders, etc. And it's, it's just been wonderful to be a, in that fortunate position where we have been able to, to continue to cruise in the last uh, 12 months. Um, as well. And we have to thank our crew and our staff and uh, for, for getting everybody out there too. Mm. So, yeah, Lisa, I, I, I brought some that. things to life. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing that really has struck me during your presentation is that, um, you know, to, to some extent, it doesn't matter that you can't cruise internationally at the moment because there are so many amazing itineraries here uh, within Australian waters for people to discover. And I think, um, you know, it really, you mentioned at one point, seeing, seeing our country um, from the water side is mm -hmm. such a different experience. And I think many of us have not necessarily even thought to do it, let alone, um, you know, sort of had the opportunity to, um, to travel to some of these um, parts of our country um, by, by sea rather than overland. 
um, yeah. you know, and having, having grown up in Western Australia and having seen um, places like Ningaloo, Ningaloo Reef, you know, Coral Bay, and further up into the Kimberley, you know, you you it's it's an absolute um, experience to travel overland to these sorts of destinations. And once you get there, you know, have you have the most incredible coastline um, to to discover. But to actually come at it from that other perspective. Yeah, a completely different experience and um, equally exciting, equally adventurous. I think. Yeah, and we're and we're very fortunate position to have those explorer attenders, and I call them the bridge as well to take you from the ship out mm -hmm. into these areas and and comfort and eats as well. So you're not having to you know it, it's just it brings you brings it to home and you're able to get there so easily and so smoothly and it, it's great. That's we're very fortunate to be able to get out there and and I think that's um I think that's one of the you know, the highlights of coral is, as I said, Australian, strong Australian hospitality, beautiful remote regions, amazing um, guest lecturers and expedition team leaders and, and hospitality crew on the ship. So we're still, we're small enough to, to know to bring, I guess, uh, on our ships that are number one to make sure that they have the best experience and an and encompassing experience and where we're going. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the questions that came to mind to me whilst, whilst you've been talking is, um, you know, obviously, uh, the the style of cruising is quite adventurous, but I wonder um, what people should be considering in terms of their level of fitness prior to booking, um, you know, how active they need to be and how mobile in order to um, to get the greatest enjoyment out of one of your cruises. So, so mobility level, we actually ask um, all our guests to, to be able to take one flight of stairs up and back unaided and that's that's the level of mobility that's required on our ship um, so as i said the explorer attenders make it very easy hydraulically lifted from the platform from a, from the deck to the, um, onto the ship down to, uh, onto the water level and out um, as well and then you don't have to participate in all activities so if you're not wanting to do a hike or whatever you can stay on board the explorer and just do a cruise so they, they're the team always monitors group and makes sure that you know you're catered for in that style. So you know, as I said, if you don't want to do a hike, you, you can go, or you, you don't have to go. You could do, um, you don't want to do a snorkel or a dive, but you'd like to use the glass bottom boat, you can do that and still see the marine life as well. So yes, yeah, so it, it, it caters for all, but just one flight of stairs up and one flight of steps back, unaided. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, so I'll, I'll hand over to Kathy in a moment because I have seen that we've had quite a number of questions. I see the questions coming through. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. But I, one of the things I also was curious to know, um, you know, many, many of us, um, you know, many of our guests, our clients have had trips either cancelled or postponed over the last 12 to 18 months, which has, you know, been very um, difficult to kind of navigate and so on. Um, and now more than ever, I think we're thinking about um, and looking much more closely at the cancellation conditions that, that come with yeah. any new bookings we're making. So I wonder if you can talk to that as well, just to give people a bit of an yeah. idea of your policies. Yeah, so so we are um, we're, we're quite flexible with our policies in regards to that. So if you have booked say, a Kimberley trip and you weren't able to get there due to a COVID related reason, um, because you know you weren't able to get across the border or something that happened to, in that stage, we have what we call we could, we defer our guests to a cruise that they can make the two, whether it's in the same season or the next season, that's fine. It's a like for like we, we protect. The, the amount that they've actually um, paid. So if next year's fees or uh, fare is higher, then that's fine. It's just at the same fare as what you paid initially. Um, if you didn't want to take a deferred cruise, they can do a future cruise credit. Um, the future cruise credit, again, is flexible because it is open-ended. It doesn't have an expiry date. We don't ask to, um, for guests to make a decision to cruise within the next 12 months. There can be you know, with the next um, two to three years if they want to. We, of course, want to encourage people to get on board the ship and actually have it, have it a holiday and experience, but mm -hmm. it's open-ended. Um, and we can also do a name change as well. So if they don't feel like they want to travel anymore then, and that their family member or they, they want to, you know, and pass it on to somebody else, then that's fine. We can do a name change. But then with some of the, um, the shorter lead time ones, we do um, and keep an eye for, so like our South Australian itineraries that we've got coming up, um, we know, I guess, uh, um, in a situations where we may not may be a little bit more hesitant about booking and putting some money down for a trip that's coming in November, given the current environment, we've got what we have uh, called our resale guarantee, um, refund guarantee. So what we'll do there is if guests put their money down and wanting to go on a trip on, say, in December this year, 
and all ready to cruise. And for some unknown reason, a closure happens and they're not able to get there due to COVID. We will actually on the South Australian itineraries for this year and January next year, give full monies back. So it's just, you just get the money back. Mm -hmm. um, so look out for those. It's not across on all our, our cruises, but on this um, one, it is for our South Australian. So we tend to, we tend to do those as well, just to, to give people confidence. Mm. Well, that's, that's so important. Um, uh, you know, I think that there would be people um, who have potentially had experiences where either, um, you know, they've, they have um, not even gone ahead and make, made a booking because they're unsure of the, of the conditions yeah. or alternatively, um, that, yeah, all they have is the opportunity to book again in the future with a credit. So having yeah. that level of flexibility, I think is fantastic. And, and particularly, as you say, for those sailings that are coming up sooner, where those of us in Victoria and New South Wales and the ACT in particular, you know, we know that, that, you know, we're getting closer to moving out of lockdown, but there's no finite date on the calendar for yeah. us, unfortunately. So that level of flexibility, I think, will give people a, a, a much greater sense yeah. of, um, you know, peace of mind. Yeah, so they could book a, a January cruise to Adelaide in, in and out of Adelaide or wildlife trip and then know that if, if the borders didn't happen, um, then, yeah, it would be for mm. weeks back. Fantastic. Um, Kathy, we might throw to you, I think, uh, um, and let's see if we can um, tackle some of the other questions that have come in over the, the past 45 minutes or so. Thank you. I think a couple of them you have already addressed in terms of um, uh, you know, with the border closures, obviously, we can't just head up to Queensland to do the Great Barrier Reef or, you know, obviously, we have very little control over that. So I think you've, you've managed that as lovely and enticing as a lot of these one, particularly ones that are only a couple of months out, it's very difficult for us at this stage. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, hopefully I've answered, there have been a couple of questions about that, you know, the policies and getting across borders to Adelaide, which is great if you are in Adelaide, but unfortunately for us in Sydney at the moment, we might have to just sit yeah. quietly on that one. <laughs> the other question, I guess, that you know, what other substitutes have been planned for uh, the cancellation of Boxing Day? And I'm assuming that it sounded like it was more in terms of local sailings is there anything out of Sydney or no no we're not going into Sydney um so we'll have it we're putting on an additional reef trip um so we originally had a 24th of um November trip and now we're actually going one again on the uh, 1st of December mm -hmm. we then got some we need to do we call it out of water um so so servicing just to the ship and then we'll do a free what we call a free steam just our crew goes straight down to Hobart um ready for the second navigation trip so um, and it's just um, it's it's just due to, due to unfortunately for border issues etc. We need to to get the ship down to be able to commence the, the season down there. But we, as I said, we'll be doing Sydney to Hobart again um, in 2022. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions, a couple of inquiries, I guess, in regards to solo supplements uh, for yep. the single travellers. Um, can you? Perhaps. Yeah, so we, we put a number of um, state rooms aside for solo travellers. Um, and yeah, it's just generally it's 50% on top. Okay. So yep, so we do take solo travellers. We actually got quite, quite a number of solo travellers. There, there's quite a few that have met through the years and um, they continue to travel together um, as well. So they may not have known each other beforehand, but uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few. Yeah, that's quite a relatively common story of people that do travel solo and end up meeting people. And they, yeah. It's like a Definitely. domino effect. And then before you know it, they've got a Lovely large traveling group of friends. So yeah, yeah, and cool. we do do that, and and we do do groups as well. So if you've got a group of friends or family, we're finding um a lot of um intergenerational family trips. So you know, grandparents taking grandchildren, and you know, everyone getting together, and particularly in these environment as well, we've all realised how close you know, and how important family is. Um, so we find tend to find um mm. generational uh, families coming on on board the ship. Do you have a policy with children age-wise? No, no, not really. I mean, we're not decked for children, really. Um, we don't have entertainment areas for them. We don't have uh, playgroups for them, et cetera. So, no, we, we tend to, to have a, an older, more um, group. But in saying that, there's an amazing experience. Reef is quite popular um, because, you know, it's, it's getting everyone out and about. But, um, no, it's there's no policy as for much for children, but we don't seem to no kids have children. <laughs> <laughs> okay um what about for uh wheelchair accessibility and you know in within we're an expedition cruise company so unfortunately the environments that we're taking guests to aren't um, conducive to that it's not us it's the environments that we're traveling to okay, okay thank you 
And do you anticipate accepting overseas travellers for next year? Um, well, if they got through the borders and they comply with our Sail Safe program, um, they're very welcome on board. It's just that they have to be able to be compliant and they have to prove that they're you know, COVID negative and have to get through the border, the international border. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a bit of a wouldn't, yes. wouldn't you love that crystal ball? I was going to say. <laughs> Exactly. Know at what point um, the Australian um, authorities will allow international travellers back on a regular basis? <laughs> yeah. So, yes, they'd be as I said, if they've made the if they're here. Yes. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a million dollar question, isn't it? We're, we're concerned when we're going to get you know five kilometres out of our home, let alone over <laughs> border. So we're getting there. We're making progress. So we're all we're making progress. We are. We are. There's a light. There's a big light there, and it's called a cruise ship. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think mostly you you have covered a lot of the other ones. So uh, um, policies, I guess, just borders and restrictions and COVID. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're very very fortunate, and um, uh, we've got guests, as I said, out there in the Kimberley right now. Clive's out there in the Kimberley right now, and we're looking forward to hearing his stories as well and heading off to South Australia. So you know, people, as soon as they can, you know, get across this, the the state borders, and um, those for those who can get on board the ships. Um, you'll have an amazing experience yeah wonderful Thank you. so one thing that we didn't touch on Liz is um, how people can find more information about the particular destinations and itineraries and so on um, normally what we do is um, we'll do a follow-up to everybody yep. at the end of the, um, the session and um, what we might do is provide some links for people to be able to see um, digital brochures and perhaps if they'd like a mailed out copy um, we can take names and addresses yeah. and ask you to send those out for us because I mean you've you've clearly shown that um, there are there are a lot of itineraries available um, and you know for people to be able to drill down and see more of the specifics of each itinerary to know what will suit them best um, often a brochure is is what's required yeah the, the other thing that we can send you as well um, Meg is actually links through to our, our voyage logs Mm -hmm. So people travelling and cruising now, um, we get a lot of information there through um, logs, et cetera. So um, that's always interesting as well. Um, so, yeah, we can make sure that um, you'll be able to get that until you can send it out to anybody that's, uh, that's interested. Mm, fantastic. Get another perspective. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it much more real, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so the other thing you, you also did sort of touch on uh, was about, you know, booking times um, and how necessary it is to book in advance and so on. Are there any specific um, itineraries at the moment that you would say if people are, are keen to book, they should be considering sooner rather than yeah. later? Always with the Kimberley and Cape York and Arnhem Land are probably two of the most, um, so they're, they're very, very popular, particularly, you know, um, given the, our experience over in the Kimberley and the Cape York region. So um, if you've got... Uh, any interest in those, please start looking at booking earlier rather than later. Um, I mean, they're, they're very, very, very popular as well. But then also don't, don't lose sight of there's um, opportunities to do short term as well. So um, we've just released five additional sailings in South Australia. So, so don't feel that, um, yes, book ahead and plan ahead, but also if you're wanting to go here and now, do, do look again because... Things are changing, um, you know, unfortunately some people don't, can get on the ships and then unfortunately just due to restrictions or various reasons have had to pull out. So availability does come up. Um, so just keep reviewing it. Um, but, yeah, but Cape York and Arnhem Land and our Kimberley regions do book out fairly, fairly well ahead. Okay, great. I, one thing I will say to people is that our staff are very used to um, uh, managing wait lists uh, on behalf of clients. So if there is a particular itinerary that you're very keen to do, to Liz's point, um, we can continue to watch departure dates and to look for availability. And if something should come up, we can come straight back to you and, and let you know that there is, you know, there is space available. So um, don't be perturbed by the, the idea that things are not necessarily available exactly when you want them. There's often that opportunity for us to, to waitlist you and just to keep checking back with, with Coral Expeditions. And if availability does happen to pop up, then... Um, then there's an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. We can move you to a closer date, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Liz, uh, uh, sorry, Kathy, any any other last questions that we need to cover off or? Uh, I, I guess we've, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, 
COVID related uh, travel insurance. Um, that, that might be something I think maybe we should take offline perhaps and discuss. I know it's, it's, it's a bit of a, a minefield with which insurance companies are covering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have information as to specifically who has asked that question? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Well, I would suggest that we make contact with, with people on a personal yeah. level, um, but perhaps it's something to consider that we even pop something up onto our website or yeah. perhaps do a future uh, Facebook post or, or something that just gives people more information about that. The great thing is that there are a number of um, travel insurance providers here in Australia that have um, re reinvented, I suppose, their, their travel insurance policies uh, that do give really good protection for people. So um, most definitely that's something we can, we can um, talk, talk more about and certainly talk on a one-on-one on -one basis with those people that are specifically asking the questions. Fabulous, thank you. So Liz, any closing words before we sign off? We just, we just will, you know, look forward to welcoming you all on board and hopefully sooner rather than later. Mm. So no, it's, it's, as I said, you'll have very much a, a encompassing, amazing experience on board the ship with some very warm Australian hospitality. So yeah, we look forward to the day we see you all on board. Thank you very, very much for um, spending the time with us this afternoon. Oh, it's pleasure. been quite an interesting chat. Um, uh, and again, a wonderful opportunity to showcase the most incredible parts of our own country that um, yeah. you know that many of us have not necessarily visited uh, at this point. So some wonderful opportunities ahead um, to um, to add to the bucket list. Um, yeah. And thank you, Meg and Kathy, for um, including Coral. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's been wonderful to uh, to connect with you again today. And as you mentioned, we're really looking forward to having Clive back um, and sharing all of his um, experiences sure. in the last few yeah. days. So it'll be great. Um, so that really brings us uh, to the end of today's session. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed it. We hope that you've all learned something, especially those of you that haven't perhaps cruised um, expedition style before, uh, and more specifically, you know, giving you a much clearer idea of, of what an, a cruising experience with coral expeditions is like. Um, we will be in touch again soon with details of our next connection session, which will be coming up on Thursday the 7th of October, so that's in two weeks time. Uh, we are actually going to be turning our attention to a very different form of travel and that is flight seeing. Um, we have some amazing opportunities to take people by air to uh, down to Antarctica for some incredible flight seeing um, experiences. So that's uh, one of the destinations that we'll be talking to. Um, so, so stay tuned. We'll certainly be um, giving more information about that in the coming days. Um, in the meantime, as always, please um, let us know if there are any topics you would like us to feature in upcoming sessions. Um, we're always very keen to have your, your thoughts and your feedback there. Um, and you never know, it might be that a whole lot of other people are also very interested but haven't necessarily um, uh, thought to ask. So please don't be shy in coming forward with your suggestions. Uh, of course, also, if, if there's anything we can assist you with um, in regards to cruising with coral expeditions uh, or any other travel plans that you might have um, been thinking about, please uh, drop us an email or give us a call. The team will be very, very happy to, um, to assist you on that front. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, wherever you are, please stay well. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Mm -hmm. Bye for now. Thanks, Meg. Bye, Liz. Thanks, everyone. Bye.